friends, it's Nicole from the Loved and Listened To channel and I've been thinking about something that I felt called to make a video about. I want to talk about how not everything is your fault. Let me say that again. Let me look, let me look at you directly. I'm not going to look at my viewfinder. I want you to hear this in your soul. I want you to absorb what I'm going to say into the deepest parts of your bone marrow. Get this in your soul. Um, not everything is your fault. So over the course of going to therapy and just doing a lot of like work on myself, I have come across, I'm very open-minded and I will listen to pretty much anything, I'll read any, almost anything, but I've come across a lot of like self-help advice that tells you basically that everything is in your own power. And things that have recently happened to me, some conversations that I've had, makes me, made me want to talk about this and, and tell you that no matter what your favorite like self-help guru person says, everything is not in your control. In fact, very few things are in your control. And so with so many things not being in our control, then we have to really just accept that a lot of things are not our fault. Um, and I think that this is kind of a funny thing to talk about because a lot of things that I think that we, that we blame on other people, like um, how we react to situations and things like that, saying things like, that person made me act like this. Or like today I saw a meme or a, a Facebook post or something that said, um, I match your energy and so be careful what you say. Like stuff like that, cut it out, cut it out. You don't have to match anybody's energy. That's actually one of the things that's actually in your control. But a lot of other things are not in your control many things you can't even influence and so a lot of things are just not your fault so i want to talk about this because i i some recent conversations have made me more aware of how detrimental this idea of like everything is on my shoulders i need to do everything for myself I need to be the person with all the answers. So some of these conversations have made me really think about my own behavior. They've made me think about how this really toxic positivity kind of crap um, does a lot of harm to people and can keep people feeling a lot of shame. And I don't like that. And I don't like it for myself. So I'm going to give you some examples that have come up in my own life, but let's just talk about this. I have some notes and comment down below. Like as you're listening to this, if you have thoughts about this or whatever, comment down below. Tell me what you vibe with me, vibe with me. I, I, I am seeking human interaction because I have not that much right now. So vibe with me, comment. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to talk about some of the things I have on my notes here. So first, let's talk about this idea that 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 is pushed by a lot of like self-help people, preachers, prosperity preachers, I've heard them being called, that things are your fault. And by that, I mean messaging like if you believe hard enough, if you pray hard enough, if you believe long enough, if you pray long enough, that all of your dreams are going to come true, everything you want will be manifested. Um, some of the kind of like hustle culture people are like, if you work hard enough, if you hustle hard enough, then everything that you want will be manifested. That is a bunch of baloney. That's a big old bunch of baloney. It's really sad, I think, in Western culture especially. So I study a lot of Buddhist texts and things like that, and I'll get to that in a second. But in Western culture, 
this I like the the mentality that we have that we're like we're, we're really independent that messes with our minds and makes us susceptible to believing things like everything is our you know everything I can control everything because we are taught that we are these very like individualized beings you're just here by yourself you have to hustle and work hard and do everything on your own um, but that mentality makes us very susceptible to believing stuff like I can do it all by myself I am on my own everything is my fault everything is on my shoulders when in reality Things like luck, timing. I think there's a guy, um, there's a guy who writes about this. I will put the name of the book that I'm thinking on the screen right now. I can't think of it. But in his book, he talks about how timing and luck and knowing the right people and having the idea at the, you know, at the right time and having resources outside of yourself, how all of these things really play into whether or not something that we're trying to do or have, whether it works out or not. And there's like, there's like some data. If you're a data person, like I kind of am, you'll love this book and it'll probably make you feel better <laughs> because it just, there's, there's just so, there's so much evidence against this idea that everything that we do should just be like fall on our shoulders and that's crazy. So in my personal life, basically, I am a very independent person. I don't mean like my romantic life. I mean just like how my MO, my modus operari, oper, uh, whatever. My MO is to, <laughs> is to be quite independent. And I cannot say that I actively chose to be this person. I can say that I follow the model that I saw growing up. I also have had to make sure that I'm okay because for most of my life, it's just been me paying the bills, um, seeing about my health, making all of the decisions and things like that. I have not had much choice except to be a very independent person in order to get to where I am in life and also in more basic ways like needing money to pay bills I don't have anyone else to pay my bills so I have to I have to work like mo the vast majority of people um, needing things fixed on my car or where I live I have to figure it out myself. Needing things fixed on my body. I have to go to the doctor's appointments by myself. I have to do all of these things by myself. And even though I would prefer to have like a partner, or some help or something, I can't just like lay around and do nothing in hopes that someone will come save me. In this instance, I really am the only person who's going to come save me. But is that just totally my fault that I've become independent? No, I had to become independent in order to survive in this capitalistic hellscape that we call the USA. So there are, think about all of the people who have contributed to making America the capitalistic hellscape that we all live in and some of us enjoy. None of those people were even influenced by me. I don't even know most of those people. And there's very little that I can do in, in changing how it is to live in America. So I have to, I participate in the system. I do the best that I can. I vote, but I also have to work and buy health care and things like that. You know what I'm saying? So... Those are just kind of like, those are small examples, but I hope that you're starting to see what I'm saying. That like not everything in your life is just some thing that, you, that you're responsible for. You're not some horrible choice maker who picked out 
all of the bad things that happen to you or all of the circumstances that that contributes to where you are in your life. Sometimes things are just beyond your control. And that's a terrifying thing to admit. That's a horrible, scary, terrifying, I don't want to think about it kind of thing to admit. I have a problem with these, like, you're completely in control of your destiny kind of teachings because from a religious aspect, so I'm more, most familiar with, like, Protestant Christianity, and I am very familiar with some of these, like, prosperity preachers like Creflo A. Dollar and Joel Osteen, amongst others, right? But from the religious point of view this teaching tells us that when we are having a good life so if you think about one of the prosperity preachers driving like a really nice car and they have you know a lot of financial means usually things like that the message is you can have all of this you can be just like me you can also have a jet <laughs> If you work hard enough, if you pray hard enough, if you believe hard enough, but you think about some of these preachers have congregations, uh, tens of thousands of people. Do you really think that out of 10,001 people, that the, pre the one preacher is the only one who worked hard enough, who prayed hard enough, who believed hard enough? No. Absolutely not. There's so many other factors that go into becoming wealthy or reaching whatever, especially external goals, like in the material world kind of goals. There are so many things that have to line up. There are so many other people. There's so much timing that has to happen all at once in order for one person to become the millionaire or the whatever, right? And I absolutely hate when preachers, especially because people are very, usually very, they're so tied in with their religious beliefs. And a lot of people depend solely on their religious beliefs and the messaging that they get from their uh, preachers or pastors or their religious leaders. They depend solely on that messaging in order to guide their thinking. So it's terribly unfair and horrible for some now multimillionaire preacher to stand up in the pulpit and tell you that Oh, this is what you, what you, just you, this is what you've got to do in order to become wealthy like me. And if you're not wealthy like me, then you're not trying hard enough. You don't trust God enough. You don't believe hard enough. That's a bunch of BS. Think about that. Just, just think about that for a second. Let that marinate with you and do with, with it what you will. But think, just think about that. I also feel like um, when this message is given to us in a religious context, it tells us that if you have the desires of your heart, whether those are, you know, financial, the perfect family, you know, whatever, the night, the brand new red Range Rover, that's one of the desires of my heart. <laughs> but if you have one of those, then, oh, you were worthy. You were worthy of God's blessing. You worked hard enough to be worthy of God's blessing, good for you. But if you don't, if just one thing goes wrong, if one family member gets sick and you can't work, they can't work, and now you have to pay all of the bills, and now you have less money, and now you can't invest, and like especially with money stuff. If one thing goes wrong in your life, and you are the average or even above average earner in the States, if one medical problem goes wrong, if you need some kind of extra care, anything like that, if one thing goes wrong in your life, it can screw up your financial life for the rest of your living life. 
Does that mean that you didn't work hard enough? Does that mean that you didn't pray hard enough? That you didn't believe hard enough? No, it means that you, luck wasn't in your favor. It means life sucks. It means that shit happens. It doesn't mean that you are less worthy. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It doesn't mean that God doesn't favor you. It doesn't mean any of that. And I, I, I really hate this messaging, especially from religious leaders. It's so, it's so damaging. And it also does not adequately address real life situations that real people experience and endure. And I think that's unfair. So am I saying that you should stop praying that you should stop believing in yourself, <laughs> that you should stop trying so hard? With that last one, I mean, maybe, you know, if trying very hard is detrimental to your health, like it has been to mine in some, you know, sometimes. But I'm not telling you to not have faith, especially faith in yourself. I'm not telling you that. You better have faith in yourself. Who's gonna have faith in you? Besides you, maybe your mama if you're lucky, but really, anything big you want to do, really, that's something you do have some control over. The part where you go and you show up. But it working out exactly how you hope that it works out, there's probably some other people messing around under the hood of your the car that you're trying to build and they can mess up some stuff and you don't have any control over that all i'm telling all i'm saying is that don't be so doggone hard on yourself if everything you're working on is not even if it never works out, don't be so hard on yourself. If what you're working on, what you're accomplishing, if it never works out, let's just sit with that for a second. Nobody asks us to do this ever, but just trying to focus on all of this, everything is gonna per be perfect, everything is gonna work out. Just focusing on that part of life is insanely un it's not realistic you can believe i believe that one day i will have a hundred thousand youtube subscribers it hasn't happened yet even though i think that i make good content but this is a perfect example because i can sit here even if i had better content <laughs> I still need 100,000 people who I have no control over. I'm not driving over to y'all's house, knocking on the door saying, hey, did you, describe, did you subscribe to Loved and Listened To yet? No YouTuber has ever done that. You still need 100,000 independent people that you have no control over, that you have limited influence over, you still need all of those people to make individual 100,000 different choices in order for you to get to 100,000 YouTube subscribers. So if you don't get to whatever the goal is, even if you try really hard, even if you do the quote unquote right things, don't let that determine how you feel about yourself. Don't let that determine the level of worth that you think that you are worth. No. No, you're worthy of, to be happy. You're worthy of having inner peace. You're wor worthy of having at least some of the things <laughs> that you want and that you like and that you enjoy. You're worthy of love. You're worthy of all of the good stuff that's not related to finances, especially. <laughs> You're worthy of a healthy body and of laughter and good friendship and whatever other kind of relationships you want. You are 1,000% worthy of those things. 
regardless of whatever monetary accomplishments you get to, regardless of whatever job title that you have, you know that other stuff, you're still worthy. You can still pursue that red Range Rover, but don't ever lose sight of the fact that you are still worthy of so many good things. Regardless if 100,000 people decide to subscribe to your YouTube channel, you're still worthy. Don't be crazy. Don't be crazy. Don't tie your worth to these external things that you have so little control over anyway. I want to also talk about childhood and how your upbringing can really determine your behavior later in life. And we all know this, right? We all we all know this on you know, you've seen the memes about like <laughs> your childhood and how when you go to the therapist they ask about your childhood and things like that. I want to talk about also how childhood can really affect how we behave in very in ways that we're not even conscious of and how that behavior that we didn't choose for ourselves that we had no control over absorbing but how the experiences that we have in childhood can really can can really negatively affect us as we get older. And as I have gotten older, now I'm not saying, you know, you go out and punch somebody in the face because your daddy didn't hug you. My daddy didn't hug me at all. I know it's been a very long time since I punched somebody in the face. I'm not telling you to do that. But I don't think that we that we talk about that enough in a practical way we can say oh our parents sucked or our mom did this our dad did that or whatever but as we get older and or more mature we need to build enough self-awareness to see how our experience of childhood is currently affecting our present day behavior and then make better choices about our behavior in order to make our lives better, easier, happier, like whatever, right? That's some that's work that you can do on yourself and for yourself. It's not easy work, but you can do it. So let's talk about childhood. As I've gotten older, I have grown to have like, I've always loved my mother and my brother, the rest of my family members. I grew up with um, my mother's siblings. I did not know my father's side of my family, like, at all. One of them could knock on the door right now, and I would be like, who the hell are you? I have no idea who they are. Um, but, and I did not grow up with my father, but I grew up in a really well protected environment with all of my mother's siblings and with my brother and now that I've gotten older and I have had the opportunity to meet some really beautiful people who had very difficult childhoods some of them not even aware of how difficult or how restrictive or how shame filled their childhoods were but I've met some really amazing people who had difficult childhoods who are not yet to the point where they are giving themselves enough love and grace to to see how their childhoods um, influence some of their behaviors whether it's related to how they feel about themselves or their their like addictions and things like that just heartbreakingly lovely people who were not loved the way that I feel that they deserve to be loved and who still don't know that. And anyway, but I, like I telling my own story, 
as I've gotten older and met, I mean, several people like that, I have a newfound appreciation for the family that I grew up in, even though technically I grew up in like the single parent, broken home, <laughs> black stereotype, single mother kind of situation. The people who were around me, they didn't always understand me, and I don't think they still do right now, but they always loved me. And they always respected me. And my little opinions that grew up into big opinions, they always expressed interest in whatever thing <laughs> that I wanted to do. They spoke kindly to me. I'm appalled sometimes by how people speak to their children. It's very upsetting to me. But I just was surrounded by love and just people who liked me and loved me. So now that I've gotten older, especially like with my relationships with men, I, I have a pretty good compass <laughs> when it comes to my relationships with men and with making friends and I have, and I have enough confidence to trust my intuition about people. I don't seek too much, an unhealthy amount of external validation. I obviously seek some external validation, especially at work. And I'm a YouTuber, so of course, please hit like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> I seek some external validation, right? But I don't, I don't feel like I seek an unhealthy amount. I don't tolerate any type of like abuse and things like that. So. As I've gotten older, I can see, and meeting other people, I can see how when you're a kid, all these things happen to you that are not your fault, and those things can make, can, they can permanently influence how you think about yourself, the behaviors that you end up um, having in your young adulthood, your midlife, maybe well into your 80s or 70s, but those things that happen to you that you have no control over when you are a kid. And then when you grow up, if you need therapy or if you need some help or something, we don't live in a society where, where we have the mentality to even make mental health care affordable or even accessible. And we also have this mentality of like the rugged individual where everything is on your back and you can do it. All of those ideas really, and your treatment, like how you were treated as a kid, all of that stuff, none of that is your fault, but it can all come together and really create some negative situations in your life that you have to somehow through therapy or reading or maybe having a really good friend, but somehow you have to get out of that, understand that not all of these things that happened to you were your fault. And then you have to relearn how to behave in order to support what will make you happy. But it's just so frustrating to me that we have, that we are fed so much bull, bullarchy about if you're not rich, then it's solely your fault. If you have some addiction, it's solely your fault. If you're whatever, what, whatever you are that's outside of like the perfect range, if you're a man and you're a bank and you're not a millionaire, it's solely your fault. It's not true. And you're worth knowing that even though external circumstances can really affect our lives and we don't have any control over those external circumstances, we're still worthy. Still worthy of being happy, of being loved, all that good stuff. The last thing I, I want to say is that 
something good or bad happening to you doesn't make you a good or bad person. I want to say that again. <laughs> something good happening to you doesn't make you a fantastic, ethical, amazing, worthy person. Being rich doesn't make you a fantastic, ethical, moral, worthy person. If something bad happens to you, something bad happens to your family, you have some unfortunate medical diagnosis, it doesn't make you a bad, horrible, terrible person. It just means you're alive in this meat sack that we call a body and all these other people are alive in their meat sack bodies and our lives are very inter inter interwoven. And sometimes shit just happens. When I first started on like kind of getting more into reading about like manifestation, I ran into this author. I was introduced to this uh, author called Abraham Hicks, I think is the name. And, and a lot of, if you know how to take and interpret some of their mess, the messaging that they write about, it's it can be very helpful but one of the the main concepts that this abraham hicks purse being writes about or talks about is being in the vortex and having to feel what feel the energy of what it is you want so for example when I was really into this Abraham, these Abraham Hicks teachings, I would drive by nice houses. And keep in mind, I'm a single person, so I don't personally want an 18 room house. <laughs> but I would drive by what I consider a nice house that I would like for myself. And in Houston, where I live, to me, a really nice house can be bought for $400,000. <laughs> so I would drive by them and sit outside and just try to imagine myself being inside of the house and all of this stuff, right? And it did help me by, it helped me to start changing my behaviors and it helped me to start thinking about what I needed to do in practical reality in order to one day be able to afford the house. So getting in the quote, what they call the energy of what you want can help you to start change your behavior, changing your behaviors to work towards what it is you want. So if, you, if I drove by the house, the $400,000 house, and just sat there and felt good and had a nice daydream, but then I didn't do anything else, um, and I, I just went and sat home on the couch, then would I ever get the house? Maybe, but maybe not, right? So that is helpful. But the thing that I always thought was missing was that <clears throat> life, life, life happens. Like if I started a business before COVID and then my business went out of business because of something related to COVID, for example, those are, those are, situ those are situations and things outside of my, out of my control. So does that mean that I'm not worthy of the house? Does that mean I wasn't in the energy enough? And that all of these things that happen, just my fault? <laughs> no, that was always the missing part for me. That there needs to be some grace around external factors and how those external factors really affect our lives and how people that we don't even know are so closely interwoven with our lives and what happens with our lives and we need to be really respectful of that. So much of what we think about ourselves, especially these, these negative things, these bad things, these shameful things like 
oh, I am so deserving of all of the bad things and the shame. A lot of these things are related to uh, some of the religious things that were taught as children or it's related to the ideas and the suffering of our parents. I'm not telling you that your religion is bad. I'm not telling you that your parents did a bad job. I'm just asking you to show yourself some grace and to just be more kind to yourself when things maybe they don't work out exactly how you want them to even though you tried really hard trying really hard does not I'm, when things don't work out that doesn't negate that you tried really hard there can be external factors that keep you from meeting whatever goal you want to meet. That just might mean you change the goal. That just might mean that you accept what's happened and try something else. That just might mean you, you quit and you go sit down and you relax and that's okay too. That might mean that you change how you feel about yourself, how you think about yourself, which will in turn change how you feel about yourself. It's okay. It's all right. Not everything is your fault. Don't believe the gurus who want to sell you $10,000 tickets to their in-person concert. They, I'm telling you this for free. Not everything is your fault. You can't control everything. And I hope you'll give yourself some grace around that. I just wanted to say that. I love you. Have a good day. Namaste.